So for everybody joining right now, this is uh, part two of our Booster Knowledge session. Uh, and today we're going to talk about or have a discussion about selecting the right turbo. We'll go through a couple of different vehicle applications and explain how one of the tools we've um, designed and it's a free tool on our website, how that will help choose the right turbo for your vehicle and how to use it for other, um, other applications. Uh, so we'll be joined by Harut. Harut is a application engineer, senior application engineer here for Garrett. It's been responsible for um, creating many, many turbos in the Garrett lineup over the, uh, over the last 15 years, uh, most notably the G series product line, one of the main engineers that uh, has been working on these turbos, um, also an enthusiast himself and uh, just a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of knowledge here. So we still have a few minutes. Um, we're gonna get, uh, we'll wait a few minutes before we get started here. The uh, couple other things to mention, um, the start of the presentation, we're gonna do about a roughly 30 minute presentation here on how Boost Advisor works and, and some of the other topics we're gonna talk about for, uh, for selecting a turbo. But after that, we'll do an open Q&A session um, to run the remainder of the 30 minutes. Um, so we'll try to keep this to one hour as long as everybody is uh, still asking questions, we'll we'll stay on and and uh, answer to them for uh, you know for up to the entire hour. So what you want to do is type any of your questions into the comment section, and we'll answer those uh, again after the presentation. We'll answer those questions uh, as they're typed into the chat menu. All right. So let's see, we'll give it a couple more minutes. Haru, anything you want to, uh, to add before we get started? Uh, maybe a little background on yourself and what you've been responsible for uh, in your time here at Garrett. Yeah, no, uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, my name is Haru. Been with the company for, for a long time. Um, it's been, been pretty good. Uh, learn obviously a lot about turbochargers. There's a lot more um, than than you know than you think uh, about turbochargers. It's very very complicated, um, you know, machinery for sure. Um, spins like like we talked about it. If you go back to the first session, we talked about turbochargers spinning over 300,000 RPM. Um, so there's there's always always something to learn about turbos for sure, but. Um, I've been with the company for, for almost 15, 15 years now, working on um, obviously in, the, in, in our aftermarket department, but you know, Garrett's, Garrett's such a big company. I've worked for the OEM side. Um, I've done off-highway like John Deere, uh, turbochargers for John Deere, Caterpillar, um, for, for Navistar, worked a little bit on the Ford uh, 6.7 liter um, diesel engine project, um, a lot of different, different things here and there. So it's been it's been a been a fun ride, um, and obviously it's been you know it's it's fun to be to be in the aftermarket to see these uh, these turbochargers being being used in different forms of motorsports. Yeah, not just uh, being used, but also uh, the development and you know records being broken and set. Uh, always pretty exciting um, to help a team find the right turbo uh, and to see them succeed out on the track um, is, is, a, is a pretty cool part of all of it too, I bet. Yeah, for sure. Us using it in different different areas like, you know, like Pikes Peak um, for, for drifting, for drag racing, for road racing, um, many different uh, cool applications, all the, all the videos being made. Um, very, very exciting for sure. And uh, being able to actually see the the turbochargers in in action is, uh, is is very very rewarding for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And 
you know, I think uh, it's like you had mentioned turbocharging. It's um, you know, it's it's one of the you know really extremely exciting and um, I would say almost almost like this magical type of um, you know racing and performance uh, upgrade that a lot of people want. A lot of people don't understand, and it's uh, it, I, I'd say for myself, not being, um, you know, even even being that I've worked for Garrett since uh, 2016, there's still a lot that uh, that I don't understand myself. Um, so I think the the goal of these booster knowledge videos is to help break that down and help people make uh, become more comfortable with the uh, the basic concepts and principles behind that. So today we're gonna to get into how to turbocharge. And you can see some of the, the cool different engines um, on, the, on the main slide here, everything from LFs to 2Js. And, uh, and we're gonna to try to get into how you use one of our tools called the Boost Advisor and go through two different matches. And then Harut's gonna walk you through some of the basic principles and some of the concepts that you're going to see when you use this tool and how to sort of refine your search, uh, your search results, and take that to your local distributor to help uh, find and identify the correct turbocharger match uh, for your vehicle. So, uh, Harut, why don't you take over and let's uh, let's get started? Yeah, let's let's get started. All right. Okay. So first, let's talk about uh, turbocharger horsepower potential. So when you go through our website, you look at different turbochargers, um, whether it's GTX, G Series, GTW, all that, uh, all the different uh, frame sizes. Uh, you you see maximum power, right? Whether it's uh, 500, 1,000, 2,000, uh, those horsepower numbers stated. Um, so we, we always list the maximum horsepower potential for that turbocharger. So as the slide says, maximum power stated for each turbo has been calculated based strictly on choke flow of the compressor map. So when you look at the, the compressor maps, you go uh, far right of the compressor map, that's your choke line. And that's what we're calling the choke flow. So that re represents the potential flywheel horsepower. So, and that potential horsepower also um, is highly dependent on your vehicle's modifications and tuning slash calibration. So as we talked about uh, in our first session um, about turbocharger knowledge, we talked about the turbocharger being a, a part of a system. So it's not the turbocharger itself. So you can't just, you know, slap on a, a, a turbocharger and expect it to make the maximum power available for that turbocharger your vehicles modifications the whole system is it's, it's it's an integrated system has to be capable to uh to push the turbocharger to uh to its maximum horsepower potential so the horsepower you see um in uh, in our website that's horsepower per per pound minute of compressor flow so we take that choke flow we're talking about, we multiply it uh, by, by a number and each turbo series is different. And that's how we get our, our maximum horsepower potential. So let's, you know, the G35 900, that's a G series turbocharger in a 35 frame size. And it has the capability of uh, 900 horsepower. So that's maximum horsepower potential. That doesn't mean everybody's gonna make 900 horsepower on their setup. Everybody's setup is different. Everybody's calibration is different. So, but uh, we state it that way as that being the maximum potential of the turbocharger. So, um, we'll, so the next thing we'll we'll talk about horsepower numbers on the gear website are also crank slash flywheel horsepower. They are not wheel horsepower. So you know everybody that talks about horsepower, they they put it on a dyno it's almost always uh, wheel horsepower. So wheel horsepower is always gonna be higher, right? So crank horsepower, that's the measurement of an engine. Um, measurement of engine can make without the drivetrain connected, whether it's you know, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, rear wheel drive. 
right? So crank horsepower is the purest way to calculate the engine performance. And at the same time, maybe the least applicable for real world validation. Um, when uh, even, even OE, OE manufacturers, when they, let's say, when they advertise a, uh, a horsepower on, on a truck, on a car, uh, on a brand new car, it's always crank horsepower that they advertise as well. It's not wheel horsepower. So it's it crank horsepower is something that the OEs use that we use to uh, to you know to rate OEs use to rate their 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 engines and what we use to rate our turbocharger. And uh, wheel horsepower obviously measure of power with the drivetrain connected. And as we talk about, this is the most common common method of measuring horsepower. And you know it's it's a higher number, right? You don't want to talk about crank horsepower. My 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 car makes 300 horsepower. You don't want to talk about that. You want to talk, say that your car makes, you know, 350, 400, depending on what drivetrain it is. So that's that's more exciting. You wanna you wanna you wanna show off your your higher horsepower number, All right? So again, we we talk about uh, on our website, on our on our anything um, Garrett related on our flyers, things like that will be crank horsepower. So whether it's the G series, the GTX, GTW turbocharger, it will be crank horsepower that we talk about. So to go a little bit more in depth in terms of drivetrain losses. So there's uh, the front wheel drive, right? Rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. And each one has different uh, drivetrain losses and that varies by transmission type. Right, so front wheel drive has the least uh, drivetrain loss. That's about 10%. Rear wheel drive is about uh, 15%, and all wheel drive will be about 20%. And with uh, automatic transmissions, you're going to have even a higher power loss. Um, so just to give an example, let's say you're you're targeting a uh, wheel horsepower of 600 for a rear wheel drive application, right? So you want, uh, you, you know, in the end, you wanna make 600 wheel horsepower for, uh, for a wheel drive car. So in order to, to calculate that, so when you're looking at our, our website and looking at what turbocharger to select and you wanna look at the, the horsepower number. So specifically here for a rear wheel drive, what you wanna do is take that 600 number so you're targeting 600 horsepower and you want to divide that by one minus your 15%, which is the estimated drivetrain loss. So if you do one minus 0.15, you get 0.85. So in the end, you're dividing 600 by 0.85 and you get a target crank horsepower of 705. So again, if, if you're looking for a, uh, a target of 600 wheel horsepower for a rear wheel drive application. What you wanna do when you're looking at, uh, at our website, at maps, at turbochargers, you want instead a target of 705 crank horsepower, right? So, and just one important thing to note always, you know, your, your horsepower target is also gonna be dependent on the dyno type that uh, in the end you're gonna use to hopefully uh, calibrate your, your ECU and the engine, it, it's gonna depend, right? Whether you're using a Mustang dyno or a, uh, a dyno jet or using a hub pack, um, that's, that's all gonna be different, right? It, it depends on the dyno type, how it's calibrated, all those numbers are, are different. Obviously, if, if you're looking for highest horsepower number to show off, I think you you want a, a dyno jet that's going to give you the highest horsepower, or you, you want to use uh, yeah a hub or, or a dyno jet that's going to give you um, the highest number. Typically, a um, a Mustang dyno shows lower numbers, even though look your 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 car is going to make um, the same amount of crank power, right? Whether it's it's on these uh, any type of dyno, so in terms of drivability. It's going to be the same. It's just the number outputted by the by the by the dyno is going to show different depending on the dyno type. So that's important to remember as well. Yeah, 
And um, before you go into Boost Advisor, yeah. I think just a, a quick note. Um, and the reason why, like, I, I know we explained the, the you know, crank or, and drivetrain, um, drivetrain loss and all that, but really the only way that we can give a horsepower uh, target to a turbo is because we, you know, based on cylinder type or based on cylinders of the engine, valves, fuel type, we'll get into that in a second with Boost Advisor. That's really the only way we can calculate like power potential. Um, so again, that's why everything is done um, in crank numbers is because that's what we can estimate uh, performance by uh, for turbocharger based on the airflow and, and other factors. And um, so, you know, right, I mean, anything else to, to add to that route? Yeah, exactly. As, as we'll get into to Boost Advisor, we'll talk more about uh, the different uh, conditions that affect your, your, your match target um, as well. Yeah, cool. So talking about the Boost Advisor, Boost Advisor is a uh, tool on our website. So if you go to garrettmotion.com, uh, you'll go to uh, racing and performance and then how to choose a turbo. You can choose uh, the Boost Advisor and then go through this, uh, this web-based application to help you choose a turbocharger. So it's, it's, it's a free tool on the Gear website. Um, it helps you find a, a match and as, as we'll show, it'll give you several different matches and uh, you'll have to either be able to decipher which one, which turbocharger best uh, suits your needs. And then in the end, we always recommend um, to go to one of our distributors who are very experienced and they can help you as well to narrow down the results and choose the right turbocharger for your application. So we'll, let's go through some, some examples. Uh, the first one will be in LS engine. So this will be a twin turbo LS application. Our target will be 1200 crank horsepower. It's a 6.2 liter displacement. So uh, these, these are all the inputs we'll go through on, on Boost Advisor. So this is uh, like a, a basic um, inputs that we, we use to, uh, to calculate uh, the two, two points to be able to put on a compressor map and give you, a, give you the results. So, right, well, we talked about valves per cylinder. That's the, um, for an LS engine, it's two. Fuel type, we're gonna put in input E85 for this one. Intercooler type is air to air. We're at uh, altitude, let's say of, of uh, zero feet, so about sea level mid-range RPM. So this one, mid-range RPM will, will is, is a little tricky. Um, this will go based off of maybe um, ex experience of uh, what, what's been done with this engine before. Um, you can't just choose, let's say 1500 RPM. Uh, you do have to be a little bit more realistic. So your mid-range RPM is, let's say your peak torque target. Um, so in this case, for, for an LS engine, we'll choose about 4,300 RPM. Then you also have your max engine RPM. In this case, will be 6,500. We're going to do a twin turbo application and an air temp of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's actually go to the website. And I'll show you how it is. So when you, when you come to the website, um, you'll go to the home page. So racing and performance, and then scroll to how to choose a turbo. And then this is where the Boost Advisor app is located. So when you click on this, you'll, it'll ask you to create an account. That'll be very helpful because then you can save your, uh, your different matches, your inputs, so then you don't have to input them all the time. It'll, it'll save, you, save you some time as to uh, the different uh, matches that you've had. So this is the Boost Advisor itself. Um, again, it starts off with your crank horsepower target. In our case, it's, it's 1200. You'll put in your engine displacement, well, whether you're putting it in, in liters or cubic inches. Um, you have uh, two options there. Number of valves per cylinder in your engine. 
the different fuel types you can put in, pump gas, diesel, E85, methanol, and race gas. And what this will do is it'll change the inputs uh, for, for air fuel ratio and BSFC, which is a brake specific fuel consumption. It's uh, similar to air fuel, air fuel ratio. Um, so that'll, that'll change uh, the output, the type of intercooler you're using, um, whether you're not using an intercooler air to air or air to, to water. This will change uh, some of the pressure losses and also the, uh, the intake, uh, the engine output, engine intake temp. So basically, the after the turbocharger compresses the air, it heats up, and then the in intercooler will uh, will either you know cool the air, or if you choose none, that that it won't. So we talk about um, the altitude as well. Something we'll, we'll go through. Let me this here. We'll talk about uh, altitude and how that affects the, the results as well. That's pretty important. Um, and then uh, engine RPMs, right? So you have, you obviously usually know your, your peak, peak uh, power engine RPM. Um, you know, whether it's 6,500 for a V8 or you're running a, like a K-series, that'll be over, over 8,000 RPM. And then you want to choose a realistic number for the mid-range RPM. Um, basically, your, your peak, peak torque, uh, your peak torque will be your mid-range engine RPM. So not, uh, not 1,000 RPM. I mean, we all want peak torque. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right but that's not realistic <laughs> yeah yeah you want to be realistic you want to go off of uh basically you, you can look at maybe the the oem engine specs and see what they have as as mid-range rpm as peak torque and use that or based off of what people have already done with turbocharged engine and be realistic about your mid-range rpm because uh basically these are your two points that will be plotted on on the map um so if you put something low, you might, you know, you might end up with with no match. So you want to be be realistic. So whether you're doing a single turbo setup or a twin turbo setup. So what this does is if you're using a single turbo setup, it matches to let's say your 6.2 liter LS engine. If you're doing a twin turbo setup, what it has to do is it has to split that displacement. So in order to, to be able to match up properly. So in this case, uh, since we are doing twin turbochargers, it'll split the engine displacement from 6.2 and it'll match to a single turbo at, uh, at 3.1 liters. So that's what this does here um, to be able to properly match the turbocharger. And in the end, uh, your local environment, so your local air temperature, so this is your uh, the the compressor inlet temperature that will be used for for the matching calculations. And um, in the end, you you might want to put your put in your zip code wherever you are, and this will also help find your um, your nearest distributor, your nearest dealer. So then, um, once uh, once you have the results, um, you can contact your nearest distributor, and they will help in terms of uh, finalizing the match and also purchasing uh, the turbocharger. So we've, we've, we've already put in the, the inputs. We click uh, show recommendations. So that'll go through. It'll calculate using all the inputs and uh, basically plot to two points and it'll go through all the available compressor maps um, from our website and give you the results. So the first thing you'll see here, obviously you can, you can let's go back up. You can save your search inputs. So then you don't have to, to put them in uh, all the time. So when you come back, you can reload those, those inputs and make it, uh, make it, make the, you know, go to the results uh, faster. So here gives you the, the power at the, at the crankshaft. So six six forty eight. Basically, since we chose a twin turbo system, what that's going to do it's it's going to split your your power uh, target as well. 
So in this case, we have uh, 648, um, our, our torque at uh, 792. Some, something strange happened here, Tim. Um, it's giving us a max power RPM of 1200. I'm not sure why. So that's something that we can we can look into um, later on. But uh, still, the the power and torque uh, are correct. You'll have a uh, a boost pressure. Sorry, it's it's not it's not strange. Uh, this is uh, the first column is the mid range RPM. The second column is the max power RPM. So these are the two points of plots. So at uh, at mid range power, you'll have uh, 648. At max, you'll have the uh, the target that we put about 12, 1200, so 1195. And then the different boost uh, boost gauge pressures. So you have 17.38 at the mid-range and 25.8 at the at the max power. This also gives you the intake manifold temps. So when you choose you know, air to air, air to water, or none, this will this uh, intake manifold temp will vary. And then it also outputs the pressure ratio. So at mid-range, we have a pressure ratio of 2.25. And at max, we have 2.81. And then uh, finally, it gives you the corrected airflow. So these the last two lines, basically, these this is what um, the, the, uh, the boost advisor uses to plot the points on the map. So the, your first point will be your mid-range at a pressure ratio of 2.25 and about 28 pounds per minute. And your second point will be a pressure ratio of 2.81, about 51 pounds per minute. So it'll give you quite a bit of results. So you can see these are the two points that it plots. So we'll go more into depth with that. And it gives you quite a bit of options. So that's something we'll, we'll go through. We'll give you a bit of advice on, uh, on how to choose it. Um, but in the end, you, you, you'll, you will want to contact, um, let's see, let's choose. Uh, yeah, while you're, while you're doing that, um, yeah. it, so each turbo, as everybody knows, um, or maybe you don't know, but uh, each turbo can make a range of horsepower for a specific displacement range. Um, so this, what, even though we've gone through 10 different inputs as far as fuel type, intercooler, uh, altitude, air temps, um, power of one or two turbo, um, we're still considering all of this a basic match. And there's a lot more detail that, uh, that we would need to make an even further refinement of the, uh, of the turbocharger. So, um, just remember that too, even though we are asking for 10 different inputs, this is still considered uh, a basic match and it's uh, a compressor stage match. Um, and we're not even getting into the hot side or the, the, the turbine flow um, in this specific application here. So just, uh, just a quick note that, uh, yeah, these are um, still a basic match that you'll need to take to, uh, to one of these distributors that you're seeing now on the screen to help try to refine all of this a little bit more. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, exactly, Tim. So this will, yeah, you'll get the, uh, the outputs for the results. And then you also get a list of distributors that you can go to to discuss the results and, um, and you know, uh, finalize it and select the, the proper turbo for, for your application. So this will, this will definitely help gives you the list. So let's go back to the presentation. Okay. So right, we, we went through the boost advisor. We put all these all this all this data here. Uh, like Tim said, it's it's pretty basic, right? In order for us to do a, a complex match, uh, we typ typically require all types of uh, temperatures and pressures and airflow in order to be able to properly match, um, exactly match a turbocharger. And that's not something that, you know, uh, like we, we, can, we can do. You have to have a fully instrumented um, system. Let's say you have, you know, thermocouples and pressure sensors all over your engine in order to be able to collect that data. Um, so then we can provide a, a, a 
an exact match. But this, this uh, booster visor will give you a, a basic idea of, um, of what you need, a basic idea of the match. Uh, so your inputs are, are, are still pretty important, right? It, it can change the results uh, drastically depending on, on your inputs. But um, so we've selected three turbochargers here from the results of, of our match. And this is like a range, right? You have a G3770, a G35900, and a GTW3684. So this gives you, let me move this up here. So this gives you different options, right? Like Tim said, this is matching compressor stage and not turbine stage. Because with the uh, turbine stage, you need more, more data in order to be able to match it. So what you have to do here, you go here, you know, uh, a G30 is a smaller frame size, so it has a smaller turbine wheel. Um, let's say you want uh, the quickest response, and you wanna you wanna be able to um, to hit your target horsepower, but if eventually you probably won't be able to increase that power later if you want to. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want a quick response for for autocross for for road racing, this might be the turbocharger you want to select. But if if you're looking for maximum horsepower potential and your engine can handle it, you might want to go with the G35900, right? It, it has a higher horsepower capability than the 3770. And then if you're looking for, you know, an entry level option, you might want to go with the GTW36. Uh, so obviously you're limited with uh, turbine housing options and things like that, but uh, this will give you an entry level turbocharger and you'll still be able to hit your targets. Your target horsepower. So let's talk about a little bit more about the map. So these are the two, these two red dots are the points um, that we were talking about. So the, your pressure ratio and calculated airflow. Um, that's how it plots because on the x-axis you have your, uh, your corrected airflow. This is pounds per minute. And then on the y-axis is your pressure ratio. So the first point is your mid-range RPM point. And the second point is your, your horsepower target, your, your maximum RPM point. So you can see the maximum RPM point falls into the largest efficiency island, which is 76%. So this means the compressor stage is 76% efficient at this point here in this island. And then as you go into the different islands, the, the efficiency decreases. So obviously, you know, you, you do want to be in the highest efficiency island. That'll give you the, uh, the lowest intake temps um, for the turbocharger. But if you're trying to make maximum horsepower, then, you know, um, you, you try to push the, push the turbocharger as, mu as much as you can. So, and then we were talking about choke flow, right? This, this line here all the way to the right is your choke flow. That's how we determine the maximum horsepower potential of the turbocharger. <clears throat> and you can notice here, even though the maximum here is about, uh, you know, uh, so about 72, 73, but that's, that's at a specific pressure ratio. So you need, you need to be about, about uh, 2.3, uh, 2 2.4 pressure ratio in order to hit that maximum horsepower potential. So besides your, your engine being able to handle that maximum horsepower, you need to be at a specific area in order to hit that target. Right. What you also want to make sure is these numbers here, 65,000 all the way to 150,000. This is your RPM. So this is your turbocharger speed. So besides uh, pressure ratio and corrected airflow, you can also, out of those three things, you can, you can um, if you have two of those, um, two of that data. So let's say you have a pressure ratio of two and a half and you're at a turbo speed of 125,000 RPM, you can also, you can still match, uh, put your, you know, put a point on the map. So that's another way to do it. Our, our matching uh, software uses uh, pressure ratio and corrected airflow to do the match. Cause you know, obviously you would need that turbo speed as an input and you, you typically wouldn't have that. Uh, turbo speed gauge um, or turbo speed is, 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 is pretty important. Um, that can help you determine where you are in the map and also be able to um, not, let's say, overspeed the turbocharger, 
you know, anything over 150,000 RPM for the turbocharger for this G3770, you're going to reduce the, the longevity of the turbocharger. Um, it's not going to be as, as, uh, as durable. And it, you can eventually, whether it's uh, sooner or later, damage the turbocharger and have the turbocharger fail if you're not respecting the limits of the turbocharger, right? Turbo speed is very important, whether it's turbo speed, whether it's, uh, whether it's the EGT temps, so your turbine inlet temperature limits, you have to respect, uh, you have to respect those limits. So, you know, uh, like I said, three different turbochargers, whether depending on your application, depending on, um, you know, if you want an entry level turbocharger or a G series turbocharger, um, that's all gonna depend on, uh, on what you wanna do with, uh, with your car. And so, just looking at the maps right there, you can see that the G30 is rated to 150,000 RPM. Uh, yep. And then as, a, as the turbos get bigger, the G35900 it steps down to 145,000. And then the GTW uh, 3684, I believe that's 130,000. Um, yeah. yeah, the larger the turbo, the slower it uh, is rated. And I think even our maybe our smallest turbo is somewhere in the 200,000 um, RPM. So I mean, these things move really fast when uh, you know the smaller that they are. But I guess that's because they're they're making less airflow at the RPM, right? So the larger wheel is making more airflow. So, but there's the balance of of all of that. So, like you said, the the RPM speeds are are very critical. Anything over what's shown on the map. Uh, is putting you into, um, you know, even uh, very low efficiency danger uh, zone, <laughs> temperatures and, and you don't want to go over that. It's uh, it's definitely not not where the turbo performs best. So if if someone is in that situation, you would need to change your turbo. If you're not meeting your goals at um, at a certain RPM, time to change turbo, or you yeah. have a match basically at that point. Yeah, yeah, it might be the, the, the wrong match, right? Just because you have a, a, a big, let's say, you know, um, even talking about uh, matching, you know, people always want to go with the bigger turbo, right? You want a big turbo, you want to make a lot of power, but not, that's not necessarily the case all the time. Because um, now with, with, let's say, the G-Series turbocharger with, uh, right, you, you, let's look at the G3770, right? The, the map is, is, is pretty equivalent to the GTW, which is a GTW 36. So this is a much larger turbo. It won't give you as, as good of a, a boost response as the G30. The G30 is a smaller turbine wheel. will give you a better boost response and will give you the same uh, target, right? So bigger turbo doesn't, doesn't always mean better um, depending on, on the target you want to hit. So with a smaller turbocharger, your, your car can perform much better um, nowadays, right? With, with the technology that we have in, in the wheels, in the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel um, on the overall turbocharger, we can, um, we can put output more, more airflow um, compared to previous generation turbochargers. So in the end, the most important thing is, is uh, consulting uh, a distributor to be able to help you finalize and, and uh, pick the right turbocharger and not just, uh, not just the, the compressor stage, but also the turbine stage. So that's gonna be important depending on what you wanna do. You want a, a smaller A over R uh, turbine housing for a quicker boost response, or you want a, the largest A over R maybe for a larger displacement engine or maximum um, horsepower potential. So that's that's the 6.2 liter LS match twin turbo. Let's also go go to another uh, common match, which is a uh, 2JZ engine. So this one will be a single turbo match. Um, we talk about uh, the the inputs, right? So we are for here we're we're gonna do and uh, the example we're gonna do is a crank horsepower target of 700. The displacement is 3.4 liters. We're gonna it's a two JZ engine is a four valve per cylinder engine. This uh, this one this example is running on pump gas with an air to air intercooler. 
again at sea level. We have a mid-range RPM of 4,600 and a max engine RPM of 7,000. And now, like I said, we're gonna do a single turbo match and um, we'll do a, a local air temp of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see with the, with the inputs, the, uh, the calculations made, this is the, uh, the output, this is a table you'll get first, this is what you'll see. So at the, at the mid range power will be 376 and the max power will be about uh, 700. Uh, and then you'll have a, a maximum, uh, your torque will be 429 and at the maximum power will be 524. You have uh, different boost gauge pressures at the two points, um, intake manifold of 124 and 142 Fahrenheit. And then finally, these are the last, uh, these are the two things that will be used to plot the points on the map. So the first point is at a pressure ratio of about two and uh, 33.4 pounds per minute. That's your first point here. And then your second point is at about the pressure ratio of 2.5 and a corrected airflow of 62 pounds per minute. So here you can see the different, uh, different matches it gave. Uh, I'm sure it gave a, a bit more on the website, but this is the three we chose to, to talk about. You have the GTX 3576R, which will, which will hit your target. Um, this will be very close to the choke line and to the highest turbo speed. So if you if you want a you know a quick spooling turbocharger and you and that's that's the target you want to hit 700, and you most likely won't be able to increase the horsepower too much later on if you want to. Um, so this will be your turbocharger. This would be your quickest spooling turbocharger. Another option is the GTW 38, so a larger frame size entry level option. And then uh, we also have the the G42 which is shown in this picture here, G42-1200. So this is something for, you know, you, you, wanna make, you wanna make that horsepower target, but you also wanna have capability for more power later on as well. So these are the three different options um, shown for, for this example. So let's talk about, uh, about altitude. So this is a, this is an interesting thing. So for for people you know living in let's say say Colorado, at a, at a higher higher elevation, this is very important. Um, so as as you saw, this was what this was the uh, the match it gave um, for the previous example. So for the three point four liter two JZ, this is at sea level. You can see the two points here. One of them is at about the pressure ratio of two. And this one's at about two and a half. So when you increase the altitude, what happens is you have uh, you have a lower air density. So what you need to do is you need to increase your flow a bit, and that changes your pressure ratio. So you, remember, this is this is pressure ratio and not uh, boost pressure, right? So your 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 boost pressure will increase a little bit as as well, but uh, your your air density. Um, your elevation goes into the calculation of the pressure ratio. So you can see how much of a difference it is here. This, this is only 5,000 feet uh, in altitude. So you can see uh, it goes up, the first point goes from like two to two and a half pressure ratio. And the second point goes from two and a half to over, over three pressure ratio. So, you know, uh, this, this turbo at altitude is still a good match, right? You're, you're still under, under the speed limit of 130,000, um, and you're still within the compressor map outline. So it would still be a good match at 5,000, but I think if you go any more, um, this point will we'll keep tracking to the top right, and you're gonna start over speeding the turbocharger. So that's very important. So that's some, maybe something like uh, Pikes Peak, um, if, you're, if you're doing uh, the Pikes Peak race. Um, this might not work because you're going up to 14,000 feet in elevation. You might start overspeeding turbocharger. So which means you either have to, you know, you monitor the turbo speed, you have to start uh, decreasing your, your, your pressure ratio. And that's the only way to do that is decrease the boost. So you're, you'll stop, start making a little less 
power at that elevation. Or another thing you can do is, is go to a bigger turbocharger. So I think, um, you know, um, uh, going to a larger, larger compressor wheel, let's say, larger, uh, larger turbocharger will move the map to the right and give you more, uh, give you higher altitude capability. Obviously, with the bigger turbocharger, you're going to give up some boost response, but uh, you know it's, it's a give and take. So you'll have to you'll have to figure out what the best best balance is that you want to do um, at a at a hum, at a much higher elevation. So let's talk about the the different fuel types as well. So as you saw in uh, on the Boost Advisor page, you have different types of fuel types you can select whether it's uh, pump gas, E85, uh, methanol, um, you can choose different, uh, different types of fuel and that's gonna, that's gonna give you different outputs as well, right? So this, this example shown here is a difference between 91 pump gas and E85, right? So what E85 does, it has more uh, knock resistance so that allows for more aggressive timing. And it also has a, uh, a lower temperature. So your EGTs will be, will be far less. So that means um, when you reach a limit on, a, on pump gas, you can switch to, let's say, E85, and you can have, a, have lower EGTs and um, be able to make more power. So this is, this is what this example is showing here. Let's look at the horsepower. All right, on pump gas, um, this example gave uh, 445 wheel horsepower at 18 psi, but on E85 you can increase the let's say you know let's say on, on any one pump gas you were limited to 18 psi because of, of your EGTs because of the uh, the knock you know the knock resistance. Uh, this was your your maximum horsepower capable for your setup, and then you switch to E85, and with the E85 you're able to increase the boost pressure. And make make quite a bit more horsepower. So this this shows the difference in uh, the different type uh, type of fuel, right? So yeah, this is wheel wheel horsepower shown. You can see on the left is the crank horsepower. So you're making almost 200 horsepower more on the E85 tune versus the 91 pump gas. So the you know the the fuel type affects the overall system potential. So this is on the same same turbocharger. Yeah. Right. Same turbo, so. same uh, engine, yeah. same day. Um, and you can see there too on when when you calculate out the wheel horsepower number to crank, uh, this is pretty much maxing out that G thirty seven seventy on the E eighty five tune. Yeah, big difference. Like we we talk about Tim, it's it's overall system. Right, it's not just a turbocharger. Like we say, you can't just throw a turbocharger on your car and expect it to make the 770 um, rated power that we put on on the website and that we advertise. So your overall system has to be able to to have that po that potential as well, right? Um, your you know your, your your fuel system, your internal internal engine components, they all have to to be able to you know. Be, uh, be able to withstand that horsepower uh, capability as well. So let's also touch on a few things. Um, so rotary engines, rotary engines are a little different. Um, so that's not like a selection we have on, on Boost Advisor to be able to help you match, but um, there's a few tricks that you can do and then um, that can give you some, some outputs as well. So rotary engines, you know, each, each rotor is about 0.65 uh, liters. Let's say an example given here is a three rotor, um, which adds up to 1.95. What you want to do on when you uh, put your inputs on Boost Advisor, since rotaries flow a lot more than a typical uh, reciprocating engine, what you want to do is you want to multiply that 1.95 by two. That's that, that's a rough number, and you want to input 4.9 liter for your uh, for your inputs on Boost Advisor. Um, another thing you can do, since rotary engines deliver about one and a half times the power of a conventional reciprocating engine, 
what you could do is your horsepower target, let's say you're targeting 500 horsepower, you might want to multiply but that by one and a half. So that'll give you about, let's say your input will be 750. So these are just some, some, some tips and tricks to use to be able to help you match a rotary engine on our, our boost advisor because uh, rotary engines don't follow the typical, uh, typical reciprocating engine. Uh, some of the, you know, one of the example given here is, is uh, one of our sponsored uh, um, guys, Rob Dom, has, has built and tested many, many different turbochargers on combinations of his two, three, and four rotor engines. Um, you know, you can see his four wheel drive RX-7, um, where I think he had a, had, had a GTX, G, GTX 55 on there, Tim. Is that yeah, right? The, the four rotor car has uh, the GTX 55, 33. And I mean, he'll be doing some testing on the, the uh, G57 as well. Um, really trying to push that, uh, that horsepower target up. Um, you know, and, and Rob's been great because he's been testing so many different turbo combinations. Uh, you know, he has the, the two rotor Corvette. Uh, the three rotor RX-7, which is in the, the slide image above, and then it's four rotor uh, RX-7 as well. So lots of combinations of, of Garrett turbos and lots of data. I mean, a very data-driven um, YouTube channel where you can really see where the, the turbos are going to perform and how they're going to perform on those different uh, on those different turbos. So everything from uh, you know the two rotor has the GTX 3584 RS. Uh, and you know just different combinations of, of products so that's a really good resource if you're looking for more info on rotaries uh is rob dom's channel and uh yeah i mean yeah. definitely he's been the most aggressive uh uh person out there with, with rotaries and trying to break down the kind of the uh, misconceptions of what you need to make certain uh horsepower targets and and what different modifications you may need so uh, yeah, Rob. Rob's channel is is has been really uh, really awesome to uh, to watch and use as a, as a resource. Yeah, definitely got some some good examples. Um, if you're looking for a, for a rotary match as well, so like the, you said, this example is a G42, yeah, uh, 1450 turbo and made 1,033 wheel horsepower. So yes. quite a ton of power. Um, it's definitely a, a large turbo, right? G42, 1450. Yeah. Um, required uh, for for a rotary setup, and if you want to learn more about rotary versus piston, uh, D Sport Mag has a good article on it. So if you go to their their website, um, you can find their their article and read up uh, a little bit more about uh, rotaries. Okay, and then the last thing we want to touch on is is diesel engines. So at least with the with the you know with the rotaries you don't have an option to select you have to you have to uh, you know change a few things to be able to help you match on the booster visor but uh, the diesel engine is an option so that you, when you when you go through the inputs diesel diesel is one of the fuel type options to select so with the diesel engines the power is directly proportional to amount of fuel injected into the cylinder. So basically, when you step on uh, the accelerator pedal, not the gas pedal, um, <laughs> right? It 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 uh, it's not a um, a throttle body. It just injects more fuel into into the engine, right? So with more fuel, you're going to need more air, and uh, just something here. Smoke proof performance needs about 18 times more air by mass than fuel. So the air fuel, what that changes in the in the inputs when you when you select diesel engine, then changes the air fuel ratio target to 22.1, and the BSFC of, of about 0.38. As example, the uh, pump gas when you, I think when you choose pump gas, it's about uh, 14 to one will be the target, or or a little less to be to be safe. But uh, this is what it changes, and with uh, what it means is with the higher air fuel ratio target. So 22 parts air to one part fuel. That means increased airflow and boost requirement um, when the, the two points on the map are chosen. So you'll have a, a larger turbocharger for a given, given power rating. Look at that engine. I have a little truck with that engine. <laughs> That's 
wild. Not your yeah. typical uh, diesel setup. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think I think that's that's it for the content today, Tim. I think uh, we can open it up to to Q and A. See if there's any questions that we can answer. Yeah, thanks for and. Uh, yeah, just a quick uh, quick mention. I know we're we ran a bit over on the presentation, but you know this, this is a detailed uh, topic, and we're going to get into a little bit more in future um, topics on, um, you know, as far as reading the map or or even other a little more detailed matching examples. Uh, but you can see that this this these you know to to try and understand them, it, it does take a bit of time to break each one of them down and, and go from there. So Arut, thanks for uh, doing that breakdown. And, um, you know, we'll get into some of the questions here. Yeah, uh, I think if there's suggestions for topics, maybe people can put it in the in the message. Yeah, so we've got a few questions in here right now. Um, Anthony, <laughs> Anthony says the uh, turbos equal the replacement or displacement. Any uh, any thoughts on that? I mean, that's pretty true. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's different ways of making power, right? And turbocharger is one of the ways. Um, obviously, we, we want you to select the Garrett turbocharger <laughs> to make uh, to to make that increased power. All right, uh, Kevin Duskin is asking, where do you see the future of hybrid turbos, especially with vehicles competing on, on Pikes Peak? Uh, and then the possibilities of electrical regeneration. Yeah, obviously that's that's uh, a, a, an area that um, our OE side is is working on as well. That's 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 definitely going to increase. You know, with with e turbochargers, it it allows for for quicker boost response. Um, that's that's something very you know everybody wants the turbocharger just to to spin up as fast as possible. But um, as as of now, you know that technology is 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 uh, is expensive, obviously, and uh, hopefully that'll trickle down into the aftermarket uh, world um, once that uh, you know later on when that those materials get uh, get more more cost effective. Yeah, I agree. I mean that that'll be a really exciting moment once uh, you know once that technology is more widely available. Uh, I know our team is is working on those for uh, OEM applications, so it's uh, definitely something we're we're excited about as well. Um, next question, Anthony Popkowski. Um, I know in the beginning, we uh, when we were talking about crank and wheel horsepower, uh, yeah. I think we had had said that uh, the higher number um, would be your crank, but uh, just to just to touch back on that, Anthony, what we uh, meant to say was that your your wheel horsepower target, you know, would be the higher number uh, than your crank. I'm thinking about that, Tim. Because yeah, like, no, wait, I'm sorry, did? Yeah, your your crank horsepower would be would be higher because you're you're having your the losses. Uh, occur throughout oh, the drivetrain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think you had mentioned that wheel would be higher than crank, but crank is higher. Crank is higher. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Sorry about that. Clear that up. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, because uh, obviously, when once the power goes through the drivetrain, you're gonna you're gonna have those losses, and you're gonna have a lower number yeah. um, at your wheel. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Okay, so next, Kevin Duskin, they just named their golden retriever puppy Garrett. Uh, nice. We'll have to, uh, yes, we'll have to send him a, a sticker for his ball, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harut, since you're really, really familiar with G series compared to GTX series, yeah. uh, and really, I mean, those, both of those from GTX Gen 2 and G series, you've worked probably. Um, so closely with the new designs and the new features. Yep. Uh, can you give us a few bullet points on main differences in the you know the the overviews of the two different series, the product lines? Yeah, it's it's a big big change from from GTX Gen two to G series. <clears throat> it contains all the latest and greatest technology, um, including uh, you know uh, increased uh, airflow, 
in the in the same size compressor wheel. Uh, the turbine wheel blades have been optimized. Uh, the turbine stage has a higher temperature capability. It's a Marem turbine wheel, so it gives you a higher EGT capability compared to the the GTX. We have all uh, stainless steel turbine housings, different options. Um, in some cases, we have a T25 option. We have V-band. We have T3, T4 options available. Um, waste gated, free float. Uh, the internals of the G series have been upgraded to dual piston rings on each side. It's still our our uh, great uh, eight millimeter ball bearing cartridge. Um, so, and it, you know, we try to make the turbocharger as compact as possible and make the uh, maximum amount of turbo, uh, or maximum amount of horsepower available. So, you know, you, you can use a smaller frame size turbocharger and make the, the same, uh, same amount of power, let's say, and have a quicker boost response. So a lot of, a lot of new, new, new features um on the g-series turbochargers different op turbine housing options available so uh the one thing i think also like from a turbine stage perspective or the inlet on the v-bands the if you had a gtx 35 was it 30 and 35 or 30 and 35 yeah five are all uh the same as now the g25 through you know g 35. So if you had one, the uh, turbine inlet would, um, you know, if you had the GTX 30 or 35, um, those are all the same V band inlet size as well. Yeah, we try to make it easily, let's say, up upgradable <laughs> going from a G25 to a 3035. Um, so you can replace the turbocharger without changing your, your manifold. Cool. Okay. Um, all right, so let's see. Fidel is asking, what's the difference between a uh, diesel turbo and gas turbo? Uh, no, no difference. Uh, that's why with, with the boost advisor, uh, you might get the same same turbocharger to, to put on a diesel engine. So in terms of diesel engines, they, they do run a little cooler in terms of EGTs. So it'll actually last longer. The, the only, I mean, Diesel engines, they do produce some soot, um, which could affect the, the turbine stage depending on you know how much uh, soot it's outputting. But overall, it's, it's the same turbocharger and the same turbocharger will work for, for gasoline and diesel. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, turbo, a turbo spins and it produces air based off of the exhaust gas that it's given, so yeah. It spins and makes boost. Yep. Uh, it doesn't care what where the exhaust gas is coming from. Um, okay, so George Grob, hey George. So George has a 370. Uh, we may be able to do a, a, a quick off the top of our head match on yeah. the 900 horsepower E90 fuel. Um, what's a good match? Is it the 4088? Is that the, uh, I guess, 900 crank or 900 wheel, <laughs> right? That's important. People That's always important. forget that. <laughs> so. See what he says, it comes back. To <laughs> so let's say it's, uh, it's say 900, um, or 900 wheel, right? Cause that's what most people talk about is wheel. Yeah. So yeah. if you're make, if you want to make about a thousand, a thousand crank horsepower, um, a GTX 488 might be undersized. You might want to go with a um, G42. Yeah, G42 1200. Yeah. Um, that would be the, the right turbocharger um, to choose in, in this case. I think a G40 would be undersized. You can, you can might, even, might even be able to go with a G35 1050. You're going to be pushing it to the limits of the, of the turbocharger. So that's why you, you want to go through the boost advisor and see if the, the, your inputs um will place those uh, those two points inside the map of a g35 1050 yeah. so i think that's the smallest turbocharger that you might be able to get away with um mm -hmm. otherwise uh, the safe one is is g42 1050. okay so 
annual. I mean, G, sorry, G42 1200. 1200, yeah. So with rotary engines having higher EGTs, does this affect the rear housing sizing decisions? Um, Not the EGT itself, but the just the fact that the rotaries flow more, you usually want to choose the higher A over R size available. Yeah. Um, in terms of EGTs, the, the highest capable uh, is, is the G series. So that's rated to 1050 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a, maybe a better option is to go with the G series turbochargers. And yeah, usually a larger A over R size for the rotary turbochargers since they flow quite a bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I would say again, for, for rotary, definitely check out uh, Rob Dom's um, YouTube channel. Lots of lots of dyno data and comparisons on on turbos. So definitely even for the 13B, uh, aiming for uh, uh, 450 wheel, um, I, I think Rob has reached something like that. Even with the 3584 RS. Uh, so yeah, definitely definitely check out that channel. Um, so Anthony's asking. Wants to upgrade a uh, 370ZX, the newer turbo. Mm -hmm. It's going to run GTX, but now learning more about G series. Would it be a major difference either way, um, cost versus performance? Um, I think I think the G series is, is is a little higher in cost since it's the you know latest and greatest technology. Yeah. Um, in terms of performance, the G-Series turbochargers will outperform the, the GTX. So it, it really depends on, you know, your, your, your budget. That's always important. That's always uh, a key thing. And then, yeah, like you said, performance. So the G-Series will outperform the GTX turbocharger. And um, you can even go with a smaller frame size, have uh, increased uh, boost response, mm -hmm. depending on your horsepower target. Uh, so all those, all those factors Need to be considered when when choosing the turbocharger for sure yeah and then uh you know just a, a quick kind of run through on the different turbo series that we're still um you know manufacturing is the gt um that's our earliest generation of turbocharger then it went to gtx gen 1 then gtx gen 2 now uh I'm sorry to throw in there also gtw has three different turbo um, options and then the G series. Um, another one that uh, that we just launched a few days ago is GBC. So that's the Garrett Boost Club Line. And that's really for small engine displacements and recreational vehicles from 0.4 liter to 2.5 liter and 140 horsepower up to 300. So there's four new turbos, internally wastegated turbos for, uh, for the smaller, uh, smaller engine displacements. Um, so there's a lot of different options. You've seen it in Boost Advisor, the, uh, the amount of results you'll get. So there, there are definitely um, many different types of, uh, or series of turbos that can get you to that power output. Uh, but again, like Farouk said, if you are, if you're looking to get the, the most out of the smallest turbo, you know, what, the G series is going to be your your best option. So if you're trying to really squeeze as much out of it, um, as far as power and response, the the newest product line is is going to be the better uh, the better way to go. But that is the reason why it's going to be more expensive as well. So yeah, I mean if you're if you're racing um, and you're looking for the best performance, you know that that's where you're going to go. If you're if you're an enthusiast for doing spirited driving and, and maybe you don't need all that performance, then then you may look at uh, you know a GT uh, GTX Gen two type of a product line or a GTW. So. Yeah, exactly. And like like we we kept repeating, ultimately you want to go to the distributor. They have a lot of experience in uh, in, in matching as well. Help you match the right turbocharger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes Boost Advisor might not give you. It might give you some errors, might give you uh, not enough options for, and which is heavily dependent on the the input, yeah. the input data. Maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't give you anything. So ultimately, um, you want to locate a, a nearest distributor and uh, talk to them about uh, about 
uh, properly sizing a turbo, choosing the correct one, and then and purchasing it from them as well. Yeah, that's and that's a good that's a good point too. Sometimes Boost Advisor will not um, give you any matches, and if that's the case, you still have your your calculated um, output. So you have your pressure ratio and your uh, corrected flow or your pounds per minute um, for the match that you're trying to do. So even if it doesn't give you an actual turbo result, you could still take those numbers, the pressure ratio and corrected flow, go to certain compressor maps on the website, and then it'll help you help you understand or figure out why maybe it's not falling within uh, within your your um, you know your inputs uh, because it won't give you a result if if a point is out of the uh, compressor map, um, or if they're too far to the left side of the map, the uh, the surge line, uh, it, it won't give you that as a result. Because we're not really, um, you know, we kind of programmed it not to give you anything that wouldn't be, you know, a good match for uh, for that. And the last thing, uh, one thing I do want to mention, um, compound turbos. We, we don't have an option on the website for that because it is another uh, very complicated type of, of match um, that is based off a lot of different data. So that's, that's based definitely another one, but um, yeah, so. Yeah, lot. that's a tough one for sure, Tim. Yeah. I mean, you could go off of uh, finding uh, people's experiences and then um, I think the most basic thing is for compounding, you want to choose uh, your highest your horsepower target will be your your low pressure turbo, your large turbo. And then you want to choose a few frame sizes down for your high pressure, smaller turbo. That's the simplest way you can put it, but it's definitely more complex than that for sure. Yeah, okay. A uh, couple more questions and we'll wrap it up. Land speed rotary are the, uh, and, and uh, land speed rotary, very, very cool, uh, very, very cool car. Uh, and we're looking to see how, uh, you know, how that car is going to do out on, uh, uh, you know, out there on the, on the salt. Uh, very, very cool. <laughs> um, and he's asking, are the G45s available yet? If not, is there an ETA? I think, you know, it is one of those products where we will be launching. Um, it doesn't have an ETA just yet, but if you keep an eye on the website, we'll and and on our social media channels, we'll have um, we'll have the announcement as soon as those are available. Uh, Anthony is asking. Let's see. So factory turbos, twin T25s, considering that it's a three liter V6. Mm -hmm. So that's 1.5 liter per turbo. So yes, that's, yeah, if you're, yes. So you would match it like it's 1.5 liter per turbo for street and strip use. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're doing a match on your own, that would be that would be how you would uh, how you would look at that. Yep. Um, is there a way to calculate how certain turbos like? Is there a good way to calculate what turbo like a what a turbo lag uh, will be? There is a way, yeah. But you, again, you would need a lot of uh, a lot of data. So we would need a lot of initial data to be able to process something like that. Yeah, for sure. So maybe if, if I know you've worked on OEM matches before Harut and yep. but you've seen both sides, you've seen our side of the business and racing and performance when we're out talking to, uh, you know, talking to fellow enthusiasts at the racetrack, at, you know, underneath the, uh, the easy up there. Uh, and you've done the, the, the matches for OEMs where you're getting uh, very complex data sets. What yeah. uh, what are some of those complex data sets that you're getting um, that we yeah. hear about? Yeah, I mean it's like I said when when OEMs send you send you a data set, it's it's a lot of temperatures and pressures 
So like everything going in and out of the turbocharger. So inlet temperature, outlet temperature, inlet pressure, outlet pressure, you know, uh, pressures and temperatures going into the engine as well. Um, then you have you have airflow. They actually provide you with an airflow target as well. Uh, they give you fuel flow, um, so BSFC or, or air fuel ratio. So a lot of that data um, that they provide to be able to for us to to give them a, a proper match and even select uh, the right A over R. And essentially, with that data, you're you're plotting. I mean, how many points would you say, like, on a map for, for OEM matches to really? Yeah, I mean, they, they it's performing? yeah, it's it's basically unlimited. Um, <laughs> depending on the data set that they give you, it's not just two points or one point. Um, they can give you a, a full set where you can plot, you know, ten to a hundred points on the map, so you know exactly um, how how let's say what we call it's it's called a lug line. Right, so those two points, in a sense, that show on Boost Advisor, it's a lug line. So for an OEM, that lug line is is much more um, detailed. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they want to see it through the entire RPM range. That that way, they can figure out probably fuel efficiency and and everything. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's and they have you know diff different uh, sets of requirements as well. Um, and they're using a, a lot of uh, whether they're using EGR or uh, different emission systems, so that all of that uh, configures into turbocharger selection for the OEM world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our last last question from Clarence for engines with built-in manifolds: How do we go about getting larger turbos? That's. Uh, I think for some stuff we have, we might have drop-in upgrades, but not not much. You're just going to have to um, go to the distributor and see if they have have something available. Uh, basically, an internet search. So I think know. most likely it'll be like an adapter um, yeah. that someone has made to to mate up to a turbocharger. Uh, so we upgraded. have the uh, the two liter uh, EcoBoost yep. upgrade. There's a there is a section on the website, Clarence, for vehicle specific uh, turbochargers, and you'll see the list of of uh, the different options we have there. We have it for the 3.5 EcoBoost, the F150, um, the Raptor. We have Stage Two for the Raptor. So various different um, bolt-in uh, bolt-on upgrades for some applications uh, here and. Um, some global applications as well. So check that out. We have some um, some intercoolers, drop in intercoolers that uh, that work on some of those applications too. And as always, you know, monitor our website and social media. We'll always keep you uh, updated on any new applications that we have coming out. Um, that's the best way to uh, stay updated on the info. Um, when I think that's it as far as questions go, but I do want to yeah. thank everybody for joining today, for uh, putting your questions in the chat. I hope this helped understand, or I hope this helps break down some of the, some of the topics here for, for selecting a turbocharger. Uh, we're gonna continue down this journey of, of uh, uh, helping you understand these different topics and becoming better, uh, better you know, informed on uh, the selection process, how that goes, We'll do some other fun topics, uh, you know, and, and have Harut um, explaining some other concepts here. But I uh, really do want to thank you, Harut, and thank everybody that's still uh, still here on the uh, the live presentation for joining. Uh, we're going to try and do these once every month, so look for this around, you know, middle of August, and we'll have the the next one uh, the next one coming out soon. So, anything you wanted to add, Harut, before we close out? Yeah, I mean, visit our website. There's a lot of good information there if you want to learn more about turbochargers. Um, and yeah, thanks for, for tuning in. See you next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later.